Hey guys, Ron here, off on another adventure today. And yes, I have the little guy too. So today, in just a moment, we're gonna be in front of the home of the late, great comedian, actor, showbiz icon, womanizer, and a reported pain in the ass on movie and TV sets, Milton Berle, who I believe is in 1947, on the set of his show, the Texaco Theater said, all right, everybody, listen, calm down and listen to Uncle Milty and go to sleep. That gave him the nickname forever, Uncle Milty. Anyway, let's see where we are. Because, you know, the dog takes me on walks, not the other way around. So we're here in Beverly Hills, which I love the flats of Beverly Hills. Very quiet all the time. It's Saturday, so some cars going by today. But, and some guys walking a baby. But other than that, it's usually very, very quiet. And it's still very, very quiet. Very, very nice. So Milton Berle, uh, of course, we don't want to do our show in front of people. That kind of ruins the mystique. Milton Berle's real name was Mendel, or Mendel, which I believe in Yiddish, in Jewish, my mother called it Jewish. In Yiddish, Mendel is Mark, as far as I know. Uh, his father was Moses. His mother was Sarah, although she called herself Sadie. Later, she actually changed her name to Sarah Burl when he was famous because, you know, she kind of rode on the coattails. In fact, Milton Burl always said that, he, in fact, he said that his mother broke up his first marriage. He said that the mother was very, very protective of him, you know, Jewish mother. Hey, I know how it was. And um, that if he went out more than three times, although I, that's, that wasn't true in my case, but his Jewish mother, if he went out with a girl he said more than three times, um, she got in the way, she interfered. No one was good enough for her booby, her, her, her Mendel. Anyway, uh, so, Milton Berle was really a star. I mean, he was born actually in Harlem, New York in 1908. And by age five, he was already doing modeling and he was doing a contest. I think he was actually was in a Charlie Chaplin contest. So it was that, like 1913. And uh, he eventually started doing child acting. In fact, he was in The Perils of Pauline. He tells a story that was supposedly his first film. Now, Milton Berle was known to spin a few yarns. In other words, he bragged that he had sex with, you know, Marilyn Monroe and, and Rita Hayworth and every starlet, and that's possible. But he was known to, friends said he was known to maybe exaggerate. So we don't know how many of these stories are absolutely true. But he says when he was in Perils of Pauline, at, you know, when he was, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12, that he, or coming up to the house, that he was supposed to be thrown from the train and Pauline was going to save him as a little boy. Maybe he wasn't even that old. And he said he was scared to death and that they ended up throwing a rag of rocks. They're not rocks. Uh rags out of the train instead of throwing young Mendel out. When he was 16, it changed his professional name to Milton Berle, and he was already working. He was working in a lot of silent films, obviously silent films at that time. <clears> he <throat> graduated to radio, graduated to regular film, and then eventually he was doing um, TV, known as Mr. TV, in the beginning, very heyday, the beginnings of TV. In fact, he has two stars on the sunset on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which is not too many miles east of here. Radio Hall of Fame and TV Hall of Fame. We're going to get up in front of the house in a minute. So, doing TV then, like I said, he was doing the Texaco Theater for years, and that's where he developed the name Uncle Milty. And evidently, his mother would be in the audience often, and she was sort of considered a, what they call a plant. And, you know, a plant is somebody put in the audience deliberately to stir up the laugh. She had apparently an a shrieking, earth-shaking laugh. And they would put her in the audience and she'd try to gin up other applause by being in the audience and laughing and laughing and laughing. And then when she would do it, Burl would look out to the audience and say, I don't know about that lady. I don't know, lady, but uh, don't worry, it's going to get better. He'd respond. He'd do an improv and respond to her laughs. So it was a nice little shtick they had going. There's the house across the way. Let's get a little closer. Burl was married three times. His first wife, uh, he said, now again, he said his wife, uh, 
uh, came in between the marriage. I noticed the wife was not Jewish. Maybe the, his mother had some issues with that. Second wife died, and I believe his third wife was still with him at the end. This is very unusual because a lot of cars are going real slow today and parking in front of <laughs> here even more than usual. I when I when I'm filming it sort of always happens, but it seems to really be happening today. Oh, beautiful home. Beautiful home. Here it is. Beautiful. So, Milton Burrow, Mr. TV, like I said, and now here's some other interesting anecdotes that I have heard. Oh, of course, in 1961, was it 61 or earlier? I apologize about the dates, folks. This is all off the, you know, just this is from memory. But he formed the Friars Club. People across the street are saying, why are they filming that house? Maybe I'll film their house. Nice. Beverly Hills is nice, isn't it, folks? Nice to be a multimillionaire. Anyway, uh, so he filmed the Friars. He started the Friars Club eventually moving to Beverly Hills. And that was a lot of celebrities that he knew they used to do the Friars Club celebrity roasts. And what they say about Milton Berle is, and I, again, this is not to, um, I'm gonna hold on for a second. Rather than pause, we'll just show you this beautiful neighborhood. Something that I've heard repeatedly they said that uh, unlike other guys in the Friars Club, drugs and alcohol were not a part of Burl's life. Cigars. But apparently with Bur with Burl, it was horse racing and women. Lots of horse racing and lots of women. In fact, even with the mansion we just saw, and we'll see it again on the way back, they said he could have amassed much more wealth, but he lost apparently so much money at the track that a lot of his money went to that. And again, I said some of his claims of women are quite, were quite dubious. Nobody knows it was, if it was accurate or not. Anyway, uh, he lived to be 93. And I say that's a hell of a long run, especially in Hollywood. But this is where he lived. All the celebrities lived here. I've done Don Rickles' house. Don Rickles lived here on this particular street dogs looking up in the trees you must see something now you know that these days the celebrities are mostly heading out to Malibu or what's the area that they all love now then uh oh up north of Santa Barbara they all love that oh knock it off you north of Santa Barbara and Santa Ynez that seems to be the new place where Ellen and her wife have moved and uh uh Prince or former Prince Harry and his wife and other celebrities are moving up there so it doesn't seem to be this Beverly Hills here especially the flats of Beverly Hills kind of old school celebrities are either in Malibu San Inez or the Hollywood Hills the Han Hollywood Hills is really still the the hip place to be for music and, and Hollywood people okay folks I'm gonna pause for a minute we'll come back in front of the house uh, on the way back and then we'll conclude so the other story about uh, <clears throat> about Mount Morrow, which debated whether I was going to mention, was evidently he liked to um, he liked to at least sometimes to uh, I don't know whether it was as he was getting older or not, but he liked to expose himself. Um, probably I've heard of you know waitresses at the Friars Club, and Howard Stern would mercilessly ask him questions and tease him about this. He was very proud of his body. And he used to expose himself. I don't know how often. I don't know to whom. But, you know, if it happened today, his career would be finished in a Me Too moment. But I guess even into the 90s, it was because it was because of circumstances and he was a legend. Nobody reported him. As far as we know. Or maybe it didn't bother anybody. Maybe nobody would have reported him even today. Who knows? I just think they would. Because it seems to be the way things are now. Okay, so let's take another look at the house. Here's the gate cameras. A nice big hedge. Oh, a nice camera here I didn't see before filming me as I took the pictures. Okay, folks, so there it is. 
home, I believe the last home, but I'll have to research that, of Milton Borough here in the flats of Beverly Hills. I'll leave it there. You know me, folks. You know him. <laughs> so, again, it's Ron here. And, folks, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And if you do subscribe, please hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button. Then you'll be notified as to when I post. And if you're already a subscriber and one of my regulars that comments, really appreciate it, guys. You guys really make me very happy. And uh, comment in the comment section if you see fit. All right. Let's walk past the hedge again. Look at some of these other beautiful homes. All right, folks. I'm out. See you at the next location. Bye.